Yo, what's going on, my car audio fans? Can I get a hoorah? You guys are the worst. Anyway, we are doing a project again. We are back in the Lexus because we are completely gutting it out as far as the audio system goes, and we are changing everything inside. So my amp blew up the other day. Um, the capacitor popped when I started the car. I heard the pop, I saw the smoke, and then I smelled the capacitor. I was like, dude, no way. So I was gonna go ahead and get it replaced with the CT sound, but I couldn't hold it in very long. And I went ahead and bought myself a Tar Amps 5K, Smart 5K, to put on my Sundown XB315. So I'm gonna be jumping up from 3200 watts to 5000 watts, and the Smart K is really cool because it gives you full rated power at one and two ohms to kind of combat box rise, box impedance rise, and it also gives you full power at 12.6 volts instead of 14.4. So if your electrical drops, you're still giving you know, pretty decent power. So here's what we're doing right now. So down here in this messy living room, I have taken my amp rack out. If you guys have seen the channel before, when I first got the Lexus and did the build, I used to have these two black pieces of wood right here and they were together and I had my amps on them. And it was really cool because my amp my processor and the sub amp was all on here and you couldn't remove it and steal it very easily. It was screwed down to the wood. The wood was fixed into the car to where you really had to try to steal this. It would take you forever. And so I really liked the look of it. It was nice and clean. We're doing that again with these two pieces of woods and we can kind of see we already got it going on. This is my new Tar Amps DS800 times four. This gives you 200 watts per channel, I think at four ohms, I think. I'll have to double check myself, but pretty good power. And uh, I have some new CT Sound meso speakers coming in that CT Sound gave to me to do this build with. So we'll see those here later on in another video. So we are waiting for my sub amp to come in. It is actually five stops away right now, according to Amazon. So that will be in and that's gonna go right there. And if you guys saw my last build, even if you did it, here's what we're gonna do here. This is my DM608 processor. I have a premium, premium sound system in the Lexus vehicle. And so you can't really just add an aftermarket head unit. This allows me to splice into my pre-existing factory amplifier, wire it to my DM608, and this does the processing so that I can send signal to both my four channels, my four channel amp here, and where my sub amp will be. So it's a really nice piece of equipment, allows you to turn, uh, tune it, change the equalizers, all sorts of things, set crossovers, all that stuff. So that's gonna go right here. So that's what I'm waiting on next. But here's how we're wiring it up. I have some really long, but really highly rated uh, RC cables. They are OFC cables. They're braided on the inside. It's 12 feet. I couldn't find anything less than 12 feet. So what we did here is we kind of wrapped them around themselves, not too tight, left some slack so we don't um, pinch the cables or anything. So this is going from the processor all the way over to my uh, DS800 here. And then they're wired one channel, two channel, three channel, four channel. Now, these are to, com to convert some power here. So this is my power, this is my ground, and I also have this ready for, not the amplifier, um, but this is going just to this amplifier by itself. All the wiring is gonna be underneath the, the trunk lid. You'll see that here in a little bit. So it's a really cool and clean build. I just got a notification, you guys can see from Amazon there that I should have a package outside. So let's uh, let's go. Oh, check it out. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is the Tar Amps Smart 5K amplifier that's gonna be powering my Sundown right here. This is a beefy sub. I mean, I don't know if this video does it justice, but this is a very heavy and massive subwoofer. 15 inch, rated at, I think it's 2000 watts RMS, but of course Sundown heavily underrates their power handling. So this should be able to take not all of 5K. I've seen some videos of them smoking this with 5K, but it's taken them maybe four or five minutes of straight bass to do. I don't do anything crazy like that. So this should be just fine. So let's bring it over to the amp rack here. It's gonna go in the middle between the DM608 and the uh, power distributors there. 
So this has to be the world's biggest sticker that I've ever seen in my life. Like, what are you doing, tar, tar amps? You really want people to know that they have your equipment in their car. This is an absolute no-no. Putting your brand of speakers and amplifiers and subs on your car just says, hey, guys, come here. Steal my stuff that's inside. I have this, 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 this all in here for you to take. That's a no. We're not putting any of this on my glass. First off, it's massive. Usually what I do, my subwoofer box has plexiglass. So usually I take all these stickers and put them inside my box so when you look inside the box through the plexiglass you see all the different manufacturers that i've ever worked with and so right here this is kind of large i don't know what we're going to do about this one but i do like this part here this the red circle kind of their trademark symbol there i do like that here is the amp itself we'll get it out of the box and what it's going to do is sit right here in between everything there I'm I'm so happy. I'm so happy with this already. It's it's not too big. It's not as big as a lot of other 5Ks. It's actually smaller than my 3200.1D from CT Sounds. Um, I love that amplifier, and I wouldn't have got another one if mine didn't blow up. So I don't think that don't think that CT Sounds is bad. I love them. I had them for a year in my car, and it sounded amazing. I had no plans on upgrading, but then it blew up. <laughs> so there's my Terram Smart 5 here. It's going to go in the middle, and uh, we're going to get that wired up, making it look all nice and clean. This is going to be the front of the car. So when when you open the trunk this is all you see is this here i may move these back we'll have to see um, this is all you're going to see from inside the trunk when you're inside the car you can't see any of this at all because the seats are higher than this and the headrests are in front of it so you don't see any of this in the rearview mirror or in the back seats or in any seat of the car at all you only see this when you open up the trunk which is kind of what i want there so i'm going to unwrap this and, and uh, screw this on to the board here and then i'll show you guys the car Okay, so real quick before we go to the car, it is dark outside. It's just about 7 o'clock here, and it's freezing outside. I want to talk about the Smart 5 amplifier really, really quickly before we proceed. What I don't like about it already. First and foremost, the rack just about done. Everything's kind of laid out already. I have this wire kind of going through a hole there. This is my positive and uh, my ground wire, my, my power and ground wire that's going to power the tower amps there. And... Um, also help me give power to the dm608 as well it'll be also kind of hooked up to those two so it will feed power there this of course will have its own dual ground and power going separately from the battery on another fuse so what i don't like about the tar amps already number one is that this is the box that it comes in and this is all that it comes with there is no foam styrofoam anything like that inside this box so it's about the same size as the box is, so there's not much wiggle room, but there's nothing protecting this at all. And there's nothing keeping it secret. So if somebody wanted to take this, they know exactly what they're getting, and there is no manual in here whatsoever. That is a bummer. And the reason why it's a bummer is because of how Tar Amps does their configuration. They are not an American company, and so it's not straightforward like most other amps are. What I mean by that, if I can turn on a flashlight here, so we have gain, high pass, low pass, your frequency, and then the boost in which you can boost different frequencies. So this may not be straightforward to you. So let's start with this here, the RCA. So we have a single RCA in, and I don't know another brand. I know there probably is one, but I don't know another brand that doesn't have dual inputs maybe dual output or one output this has one single input so if you have an rca cable with two leads you only can use one i have one of two and i just taped it off right here and made sure it didn't touch anything because it actually is plugged in over there to, just to keep everything clean but you may not even pay attention to this being an output and you may plug in your input to your output signal and cause yourself some problems so be aware that you get a smart amp it's going to have one input not two that's whatever it's up to you to pay attention but just keep that in mind but let's talk about these knobs here. First and foremost, these knobs are really hard to turn. I have a lot of different flathead screwdrivers to try to get into this, and they don't fit. I also have a guitar pick from another amplifier from Audio Control to use these to keep yourself from being shocked sometimes. This also is too thick. It does not fit. So honestly, using your fingers is fine, but if you use your fingers, you can't see your adjustments. So that's kind of annoying, um, but they are very tough to turn, which I guess is good. You want a solid rotation, but they are very hard to turn. And if you're using your fingers, you can't really see what you're doing because your thumb and your forefinger, your index finger is gonna block everything. So that's something else to keep in mind that I don't like. Let's talk about this here. This is why it's important to have a manual in your box and we don't have one. This is a high pass and low pass. Most bass amplifiers, most monoblock subwoofer amplifiers don't have um, 
two different types of crossovers. You can supposedly plug up door speakers or some type of other loudspeaker to this thing and have a high pass and completely um, have it set all the way to 8K. So that's great, but most people aren't gonna use that for this. And so it's nice to know what high pass and low pass does. Lucky for me, I'm a home theater geek, so I know what high pass and low pass does, but not a lot of people do, and there's no manual in the box to tell you. So that's another thing that I don't like. Then you have your bass boost. This is self-explanatory to me, but it may not be to everybody. So you can bass boost um, a certain frequency between 35 and 55 hertz. You can bass boost that from from zero all the way up to plus 10 dB of boost. Now you can use this, but you want to set this before you set your gain so that you um, make up for the boost that you have so you don't clip your amp or your speakers. Um, so you want to set your boost and your frequency that you want to boost before you set your gain. If you do it after, then you may introduce clipping or harm your speakers. You would don't want that. So the boost um, will literally boost the bass for around either 35 to 55 hertz if you want it. So that's what that does. That's what I have a complaint about. It's just that there's no manual and it's not the most straightforward setup at all. Now, just since we're on the other side here, you have dual uh, one-out inputs for both power and ground. That is great. I have the dual um, adapters where you put them into a single and you can have two outputs going into one or uh, dual inputs going into one um, so that's fine I'll just take it off and put dual power and ground now the problem is if you guys haven't noticed is that the labels are underneath yes so if you're standing above your amplifier which most people are going to do in their car then you can't see what's on power and ground. Now, of course, after a while, you can memorize it that the middle two are power and the outside two are ground. But if you're moving too fast or somebody else is working on your car and they don't pay attention, they may mix that up and it's going to go kaboom. So two powers, two um, uh, grounds or negatives, and those are on the bottom side. That's something else that I don't like. And I've heard that the fans are pretty loud, so we'll have to see what I feel about that. Let's talk about this amp too really quickly while we're here. I am not a fan of power and ground being so close to your speakers um, because you can't have some fray like this, which I'm going to take care of, that may uh, come out over time and make contact. That is also a huge problem. So it's nice to have these separated. Um, I, there's plenty of space on the other side to make up for that. You can move everything over and have it here just like they did here on this one, but they didn't. So that is something to take note of. Just like this, this is your speaker remote and ground and then all your power is here. I would like the speaker remote and ground and all your power over there or something like that. So that's what you have. You gotta be careful with that because you can cause yourself some serious issues, both to your speakers, to the electrical system and to your amplifier. And none of those are ideal. Um, and just because we're looking at it here, here's your level and your crossover. This is more straightforward. Channel one, two, three, and four. You have controls to channel one and two. You have controls to channel three and four. Then you can choose your type of crossover. Do you want a full band so all the frequencies come through? Do you want a low pass filter or a high pass filter? Now this is when high pass and low pass makes sense. So not so much on there and there's no explanation for it. Luckily I know what I'm doing, but this is my amp board. Let's go to the car. Okay, we're gonna make this part quick because it's in Kentucky and it's getting outside. It's like 30 degrees. So here's the car. It's in shambles. There's the box right now. That's what I meant. The plexiglass. You can see through it. So all my stickers will be in there again. This is a brand new box. I have not yet tested or heard it yet because my amp blew up when I got my new box. Underneath here is where everything is at. And it's right now it's a mess. We have our secondary battery there. I know people are not a fan of yellow tops, but I'm not like a crazy car head. So I don't have any lithium back here yet. But kind of looking around here, it has some fuse holders here. There's about four. Um, there's one going from the main battery in the front of the car to this one, of course. And then there is one going to each power outlet to the amplifier of the, um, the Smart 5K. So I have two runs of power, which are right there. Those will be taken apart and put directly to the tear amps. Um, but there are the holders for it. And then there is a... Uh, Where's that at there? Somewhere in here, there's my fuse holder. Here we go. For the five or the four channel lamp. That's on a fuse too, and it's all kind of plugged up together. So we're gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna mount my fuse holders probably on this back panel right here in this area, make it look all nice and clean. And then we're gonna run it through the top side here. And then when you have my box, you won't be able to see any of these wires. It'll be behind the box, in between the box and the seat. So it'll be a really clean look. And then here's how the amp rack sits. There are some little cutouts basically right here, little divots where the seat belts come out of here. So I've utilized this so I can put my, um, the plywood 
over top of the box. The amps kind of rest above it, kind of like you guys saw in the beginning of the video. Now, my box is now taller than this, so I have to raise them up. So I might have to put them in the little window cutouts here, which is fine so that it stays high enough above the box. But that's perfect. I've already measured it out. So I just got to test fit and then cut some wood or something to make them stay up where I need them to stay. But this is going to be cool. That's all my speaker wire that goes from the amplifier that's underneath here to my processor and then the processor goes to all the speakers that's why all that's a mess there and then lastly i'm going to take this wire out because this is just regular 12 gauge speaker wire that i use um, in home theater i'm going to change it out for some four gauge ofc wiring to wire it from sub amp to box and then from box to the sub itself so that's the project i'm tired of talking out here because it's freezing let's end the video inside all right guys we're back inside we're going to end the video here we're pretty much done with the amp rack now. It's sitting upright. Have all the wires kind of where I want them drilled holes so they go through really nice and neatly. Routed them on the back so they're nice and hidden. And everything's separated. So my power and ground wires are separated from my RCA wires and my speaker wire so that we don't have any interference running through any of that. Here is the four gauge that I'll be using um, on my speaker wires here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a red and the black. So what I did was take the two blacks and then I just spray painted the edges of one of the wires there. I made sure not to cover this at all because I don't want any extra resistance. So I sprayed just the coating, just the sleeve of the wire red so I know which one's power and ground. Obviously, I can check. I can follow it. But it's always easier if it's just indicated right there. And then, like I said, everything's nice and secured. And you're going to have a hard time taking this from me. <laughs> if you if you think you want to try, you're going to have a hard time getting this out of my car. Because the way that it goes in, you have to get into the car, lay the seats down. You're going to have to either steal the whole wood or you're going to have to go through and unscrew these, which is very hard to do because you can't unscrew them with a power drill. You have to screw them in and unscrew them with a screwdriver. So you're going to have to have a lot of time on your hands. You can't just take it out. Um, through the trunk because it's too wide so it doesn't come out of the trunk you have to go through the inside of the car so it's it's really nice and secure does not move it's bolted down and uh, it's very much hidden when you're inside the car so you don't see any of this when you're driving or when you're looking through the rearview mirror to keep it from being a hazard so you guys will see this soon it's very cold i'm gonna try to get this done tomorrow i want my sound system back together so i'm gonna try my best to get all this stuff pieced back together so that we can have some audio and of course i'll make a video on it with the sundown x15 b3 in its brand new box tuned to 25 hertz i cannot wait to see to hear what that sounds like thank you guys so much for watching leave me a comment down below let me know what you think of my build is it terrible am i doing a bad job tell me tell me nicely though i don't care <laughs> uh, just tell me nicely and i will see you guys in the next video keep this guy out lost my mind i will keep on holding my head high even if the sky is falling down